Hello everybody and welcome to the TNITS webinar, An Introduction to Maps, From Creation to Innovation. Uh, thank you for being here. I will be the moderator for the first part of uh, this webinar and uh, let me uh, guide you through the agenda. So uh, this is what you see on screen is the different uh, uh, presentation we're going to have. So we will uh, hear our welcoming from our uh, TNITS president, Christian Klein, and then we will go through different presentation from uh, Tom, Tom, George Action, and here, uh, and to end this webinar with a panel on HD maps. A few important points that will come afterwards. These are our speaker today. We can see, you can see them on screen, and uh, you will be introduced to them during the uh, the webinar and as mentioned uh, the attention points so this webinar is recorded and will be made online afterwards and also the list of attendees which will be the name and the organization only so no email no sensitive data will be included in uh, tnits go projects deliverable it won't be made public but this will go to the european commission and but with your presence and contribution, you agree that TNITS obtains the right to share the content that will be uh, discussed during this webinar. If you wish to uh, pose a question, please use the small uh, uh, question window that you have in, uh, in your uh, GoToWebinar app. And this is all from me. So thank you very much, and we can start with uh, Christian. I think. Hello, Christian. Can you hear us? Okay. We will go. You are self-muted. Ah, now I'm unmuted. Okay, <laughs> thank you, yes, Carmela. Yes, perfect. No problem. <laughs> okay, thank you, Carmela. And also, good afternoon from my side, and uh, welcome from my side to our fourth webinar on, on TNITS. After showing why exchange of raw data with public authorities as a trusted source is important for the digital infrastructure, reporting on success stories in the member states and giving insights in the TNITS data exchange specifications, we will discuss today the value of TNITS for digital map creation, how maps are structured and how service providers are ensuring the delivery of the freshest updates to INCA applications. For the digital infrastructure and applications like intelligent speed assistance, automated driving and HD maps in general, fresh and trusted map updates are crucial. We have today experts from Geo Junctions, TomTom Tom and here explaining the process from creation to innovation. Um, yeah, as you know, or as you might know, all of our webinars can be found also on YouTube. You just need to type in um, TNITS and you will find it. And with this, um, please welcome our speakers and I'm looking forward to the presentations and the lively discussions. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you very much, Christian. Our first speaker is Tom Jensen from uh, TomTom. Uh, Tom is a strategic partner development manager with uh, 30 plus years of expertise with digital maps and most uh, active in TomTom sourcing operation to develop partnership in both the private and public sector. And you will be able to share your screen now, Tom. Yeah, we cannot hear you. So again, you must be muted. You need to unmute yourself. Now I can do it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Camilla. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for having me here today. Um, let me share my screen. Should be able to see now. So, yeah, thanks uh, for having me. Um, uh, and, and let me talk, take a moment to tell you about how we make maps at TomTom and especially about how digital maps are uh, constructed. Uh, making maps are not easy, it's difficult, it's not uh, something anybody could do, uh, then they will probably see more uh, companies and people uh, making such digital maps, but um, 
we have a lot of experience in TomTom, -Tom, more than 30 years, uh, developing certain tools and technologies which have, uh, you know, actually become standard in this domain. And uh, also seeing other standards in this domain uh, is really, you know, ensuring that we get a future-proof technologies which allows uh, vehicles and, um, and, and, and relying on this. Um, you may know many of the type of, uh, of, of, of data that we collect, the typical ones like geometry, street names, uh, different services on the road and so. But we also collect um, things which are not so known, so kind of what things we call like road types, index areas. Um, but I will take you through the different layers of our, um, our map. Um, the world is changing constantly. So. We have um, actually four type of, uh, of maps, um, which we have some different uh, layers in. I will start from the bottom, explaining what we call um, our uh, standard uh, map. Um, our standard map is, um, is, 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 as we call it, is a standard definition map. Um, it's the core of, uh, of uh, our uh, database. We use it uh, for all the roads where we put on the addresses and um, and, 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 and a long list of uh, of, of, of point of uh, of interest. Um, uh, also, uh, we use it for visualization, so both seeing uh, building uh, footprints and so. So this uh, standard uh, definition map is used uh, by humans. So that is when you are uh, searching, visualizing. Or, in, or, in, or finding um, uh, or being navigated uh, on your phone or in a, in, a, in a vehicle. Then we have a more dynamic map, which we call light map. Um, this includes uh, information about uh, uh, traffic, um, electrical vehicles, so you can see if there is uh, available or charging uh, points for your vehicles. You have information about uh, fuel, fuel prices, um, you know, about where you can find parking, um, also information about speed camps on the on the road and weather. So all the things you need to know which is happening right now and very dynamic um, for you as a driver on the road. It's also some which is both used by uh, by human um, and also most by uh, machines. Um, looking towards the um, autonomous driving um, and, and, and helping uh, uh, the drivers and the vehicles for different uh, ADA systems, which is advanced driving assistant systems. Uh, we capture a long, long list of information which can be used to tell about the, the, the help the vehicle interfering with the steering system, for example, optimizing uh, fuel consumption based on uh, gradient. It could be about a curvature for a safety perspective, not going too fast into a sharp curve. Um, also traffic signs, giving you information about speed limits and, and, and stop signs and, 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 and what you've got um, uh, physically on the, on, on the road that can be used by the systems in the vehicle. And then we have the last one, which is the, um, the what we call HD map which stands for high definition maps, which is also for machines like the uh, ADAS map. Um, it's the next generation, you can say, delivering high accurate and up-to-date uh, maps uh, representing on the road. Um, it can improve um, uh, the sensor perspective. So we have this road DNA, which is increasing uh, how the sensors in the vehicle, cameras and other sensors is, um, is operating. But it's also uh, giving uh, thereby a more precise uh, consumption. But it's also um, improving the path planning by giving you fresh and up-to-date maps by replacing the map tiles that you need to know on your road. So a lot of things which are not so visible for the driver, but very useful for these autonomous driving in the future and the machines that is needed to uh, make that happen. So just to uh, Quickly go over again and repeat the different layers we have in it. We have our standard definition maps, which is about the road network, addressing and routing. So all the things in searching PMRPI, navigation and visualization, all the things as a human 
normally are using in the maps. Then we have the traffic information, which is on tap, that's the live map. This is also giving you information about parking and other services uh, like EV or electrical vehicle services. And then you have the ADAS and the HD map, which is on top and meant for, um, for, the, um, for the machines, for the systems in the existing and in the coming uh, vehicles in the, in, in the future to improve safety and, um, and, and driving maneuvers. So that was the different um, uh, uh, layers on our maps. I hope uh, for you uh, with not being so familiar uh, with, uh, with digital maps, you got an insight uh, to that. Um, and also um, you will see from some of our, uh, from the other speakers today, you also at least learned the definition, the terms we use about HD map and HD maps, which is a kind of a standard in the, in, in the industry. Um, our map is never, is never, never sleeps. Uh, I will give you uh, just a quick introduction. But one thing is creating the different map layers, the different maps, but it's also about delivering into the into the market. We can say um, we um, we have our transactional map making. So within uh, since 2016, we have been able to deliver maps on a monthly basis, and also since 17, we actually have a weekly basis. And we are our aim is to bring this mechanism even down uh, when the need is, the system is there. We can bring it down to minutes and, uh, and seconds. And how we do this is before first we uh, we, we capture sources. Uh, we long work with a long list of sources, so we have access to uh, more than 600 mil, mil, million uh, vehicles, um, which is giving us information about GPS uh, measurements. We have an active community where people are reporting to us about things which is happening, telling it via our community what is happening, giving us um, uh, active input. We have a, a, a fleet of uh, vehicles equipped with cameras uh, called mobile mapping, 360 degree cameras uh, and, and all kinds of other sensors um, uh, capturing information. So it's like a, where we are driving the road physically. Then we have um, a lot of aerial imagery to see more for the visualization and so on. And then also very important and trusted source, which is in the interest of this uh, um, webinar today is also, all the authority sources. We are compiling data for more than 75,000 authority sources within uh, Tontum. I have here an example of, uh, of one, uh, which I, I, I really like, is, uh, is um, how we see the TNITS data in action in, um, in Stockholm. In this case, uh, providing uh, speed limits um, over a year. Um, and it's of course very nice because in this one, we already have the detected changes which we on other sources need to uh, work more uh, on ourselves uh, actually to, yeah, to do that uh, change detection. Um, and when we have all that, we normally do it by a few stages. So for all the different sources we have, we fuse them in and we then, with, based on different criteria and weight, we conclude uh, which one is the right information and the precious information. When we then have that, uh, detected the changes, we make the changes into our map. And, um, and, 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 and when that is happening, we are then generating transactions, which is, you know, enabling that continuous uh, integration into the, um, in, into the map. And that is by the pop publishing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, incremental update and later on uh, then uh, being the map consumed. Um, in this case, it's the standard map you see on the screen uh, in the vehicle, but we also, um, use the same system to populate our HD map and the other features that is uh, not seen directly by the driver, but used in the, um, by the vehicle's uh, computers. I think that leads to the end of uh, my presentation. Um, I will hand over uh, the screen to you, uh, Camilla. Thank you. Muted, Camilla. Still, after after more than a year of the, doing this, uh, yeah. we, I was saying thank you very much for your presentation. It was very clear and exhaustive. I, I don't think we have question at this moment from the audience, but uh, yeah. participants can still uh, pose their questions later on through the uh, question um, tab. Now we will go to. Um,
the presentation from GeoJunction, we have with us uh, Brittany Beagle and Iliana Miteva. Uh, Brittany is operation manager at GeoJunction and is passionate about all things maps, which can be reflected in her 10 plus year working in various industries with uh, all GIS related roles. And Iliana Miteva is a sourcing and GIS analyst. Uh, Iliana is working in the map making field, striving for a sustainable and fair future. Thank you very much both. The floor is all yours. Thank you, Carmela, for the introduction. Um, here uh, uh, we have a, a presentation uh, that will guide us through the details of the base layer data, data what Tom was talking about just now and how uh, and what is the TN90S platform's contribution to it. Um, of course, the overview of the presentation will be just a, a small recap of the base layer data, and what we heard. Uh, we will talk about our process of building and maintaining a product, um, and then what are the diff difficulties of implementation that we find and and then uh, talk about uh, the benefits of the TNITS platform in the creation of this base, da base layer data. So what is base layer data? As we heard before, it, uh, it is the, the most static one. It provides context to the map uh, that we are going to work with. Uh, it also um, locates uh, um, locates static data or uh, data that doesn't changes that doesn't change so much such as water bodies um, road networks administrative boundaries topography etc it allows uh, for fast performance display because uh, since it doesn't change so much it can be only com it can be computed once and then reused many times um, and here we have, we pose the question, what is the process of building and maintaining our product and um, what are the difficulties with it as well? Um, in, in creating any na navigational system product, um, the, the, pro the process is, contains of roughly four parts. Um, the sourcing task, creation of the data, quality assurance, and then release. After that, we have maintenance maintenance. Um, the sourcing task is a substantial part of the timeline. As you can see, um, in GeoJunction, uh, we, rely, we rely on combination of sources such as satellite imagery, documents, uh, articles, governmental data, and even sometimes social media when uh, the information is, is really scarce. Um, and with all this, we face quite a lot of challenges um, when we are talking about copyright restrictions, also uh, some languages uh, restraints uh, of documents, li limited accessibility to documents, and uh, overall low trust uh, of the data sources that we we find. Um, when we uh, finish with um, with this task, uh, we come to the creation of the data. Uh, which also takes quite some time to, due to the um, multiple sources, different sources that we use, which have to be then translated into a uh, unanimous um, um, uh, language and then uh, created into a database. Um, after that, we have the QA, the quality uh, assurance. Uh, it needs to be very thorough um, due to the low trust and reliability of the data. Um, and it, not, it needs uh, a lot of verification, which takes time uh, and energy from, from us. Uh, and then after all this is done, we have the release uh, of our data, of our uh, product. After this release comes the maintenance uh, of the already available product and um, it, this is needed so that uh, we ensure our customers with fresh and uh, reliable data. But because of uh, um, the multiple sources that we use, um, the maintenance can take a, a very large uh, amount of time and also based on the type of the product that we, we have, the updates can be uh, needed for example, seasonally, 
um, yearly, quarterly, and sometimes even daily. So all of this uh, requires times and resources that makes the final uh, product much pricier and more difficult to keep up with innovations at the end. Um, this is why we see TNITS platform as a valuable tool for overcoming um, all of our challenges. How can um, the TNITS platform help and what are the benefits that we see in it? Um, we see that if um, ingested into our system, um, the TNITS platform will impact um, each and every step of the process of creating um, the, the product. For example, creation of data, um, it, uh, the, the sourcing effort is um, really easy because of the common exchange format of the TNITS platform. Um, uh, it also um, is really reliable due to the fact that it comes uh, directly from the road authorities. It's trusted and also fresh because of the updates. And basically, it uh, has a much more efficient and immediate uh, dialogue with them. So after our sourcing task that is uh, maybe limited by half, uh, we don't uh, need anymore to create the data itself, but we only need to ingest it, which means that uh, we don't need to um, do any manual producing of the data but instead just use automated processes to uh, ingest the data into our um, product. We can use it directly. Uh, of course, uh, as always, we require a quality assurance of the data uh, because of course there, there can be mistakes. Uh, and here TNITS again um, helps a lot because, uh, because of its feedback back loop. So whenever a map maker finds um, a mistake, um, a lack of data in some areas, for example, or so on, we have the feedback loop as a mechanism that allow, allows us um, to quickly respond uh, to this mistake, um, to directly talk with the uh, road authority, and um, they can make the changes right away. It is efficient and uh, very trusted. Um, of course, uh, we have the, the release and then maintenance of the, of the data is uh, much, much easier um, with, with this efficiency. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. It's uh, indeed very interesting to see how TNITS can support the map making process and how it can be beneficial uh, for the map makers in, in this case. Uh, we have a couple of questions uh, for you. One is um, how will you overcome the issue of road data coverage, especially in certain countries? Well, um, I believe the feedback loop uh, would help with this a lot. Um, this mechanism that TNITS uh, uh, has, uh, with, with it uh, we can directly talk with the uh, road authority in a certain country, but also we will just uh, uh, do the manual work again. Um, I believe the sourcing task uh, and so on, uh, which ha we, because we need to balance the, um, the data coverage that we have anyways. Okay, and uh, that, that, that's very clear. And another question for you would be, how will you be able to verify, how will you verify the data that you, that you receive from TNITS? Um, well, uh, with our uh, QA, uh, with our quality assurance, uh, we, we will um, make more steps and kind of maybe also um, have to um, uh, see different types of um, kind of do spot checks and then see different types of uh, data available uh, with different sources and then kind of um, see what the differences are and again we can then uh, continue with the feedback loop uh, directly talking with the authorities. Perfect. It, it makes sense. Thank you very much, Liana. Thank you, Brittany. 
And we will now go to our next speaker. If there are no other questions, it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, our next our next speaker is uh, Philip Hubertus from here. He is a senior product manager, automated driving contact at here. With his team, he defines and manages the map products that enable driver assistance and the here HD live maps that supports automating driving. Um, thank you, Philip, for being with us. I'm sure you can um, present your screen right now. Yeah, let me uh, share my screen. Yeah, all good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cool. So thanks for having me today on the uh, TNITS webinar. My pleasure to talk about how map data finds its way into vehicles uh, with NDS. And uh, before we talk about NDS, let's let's quickly talk about market needs. I believe. They can be clustered into three segments. We're looking at the connectivity scenarios. We have no connectivity at the reasonably priced low end. Here, onboard storage or full map and manual updates are highly likely because of cost reasons. In the mid range, we already see a good adoption of using connectivity for map updates, either full or partial. And on the high end, we see highly connected systems that bring fresh and detailed data into vehicles to power advanced driver assistance systems, navigation, and automated driving features. Now, as with everything, there's pros and cons. Depending on cost, availability of connectivity, and the vehicle's feature set, the OEMs will make a decision on how to bring data into their vehicles. But what I will say is this. There's a huge share of consumers who are challenged by technical complexities, like manually updating the map in their car. And for them, the technology that aims to support them needs to work flawlessly, so they don't need to study a manual, call friends or family for help to keep a piece of technology working. And then there's consumers who have grown up with digital and connected devices, and they simply expect technology uh, to seamlessly support them, and they will not understand in case they need to do a manual update of their car by a USB stick to keep features working on their, their expectation. Also, the upcoming NCAP star rating will award extra points when map data is updated in the background without the user having to take action. So you see how important that is. And here, we're supporting map updates over the air. Uh, this is just two projects that we can openly share. And when you follow these links uh, to the articles on our blog, you will see we're actually doing this work. Let me briefly talk about the standardized here map products offering portfolio uh, for a range of use cases because that's what we're bringing into cars. So we have a here ISA map to support the need for intelligent speed assistance solution in reasonably priced vehicles that are not equipped with ADAS or navigation. We have the here ADAS map, which is a comprehensive here map content bundle for ADAS uh, and electronic horizon solutions. It includes ADAS features like curvature, it comes with routing data, it includes speed limits, warning signs, and more. Third order four is the year navigation map, and it covers the full needs of a premium IVI, uh, premium IVI use cases. We include and do seamless integration of all navigation relevant basic and premium year content bundles. And last but not least is the here HD live map. It caters to the needs of automated driving. When the vehicle needs to understand its precise position, needs to plan beyond sensor visibility, and needs to have contextual awareness and knowledge of the road rules. All of these four map data bundles and our additional automotive data offerings are cloud based and can be consumed by the OEMs cloud to cloud or directly into vehicles. Uh, we offer a layer stack of our data that leads, lets OEMs and system vendors build their solutions on top of our data. And most of the map data is tiled to support minimal data consumption. And we publish all maps in automotive formats like NDS. So let's cut to the chase and talk about NDS. If you've never heard it, NDS is short for Navigation Data Standard, and it is the worldwide standard for map data in automotive ecosystems. They work worldwide. They're globally adopted. NDS members and map coverage include North America, EMEA, APAC, it includes China, South Korea, and Japan. And NDS offers a well-defined spec for how to store map data, and it still allows flexibility for customized user experiences. The NDS spec covers the data model, the storage format, interfaces, and the protocols. 
And it's really built and defined for in-vehicle navigation and for ADAS and electronic horizon, uh, horizon safety systems. It's for mobile companion apps. It's for connected car cloud solutions and for autonomous driving. This evolves with the market needs as NDS is for the automotive industry and by the automotive industry. You see that it's actually defined by over 40 leading automotive ecosystem companies here. Uh, automotive vehicle OEMs, uh, automated driver OEMs, system vendors, and map data companies. So structurally, NDS Classic, which is the current uh, latest version, is well adopted in the market, and it's powering map-based solutions in over 30 automotive brands. NDS itself is going to have its 12th anniversary in this coming Saturday, so uh, you have to count it in dog years. It's, it's well matured, that's what I want to say. Uh, the maps in NDS Classic are organized in coverage regions, then in update regions, um, which consist of NDS building blocks, and nearly all of those are broken up into map tiles, which connect to each other and across the building blocks using a relational data. This illustration gives you a really brief overview of the NDS building blocks, which are organized by use cases. And in the top row, you see the data that's needed for display, then underneath for search and for routing, and a few more. It's a proven and well-adopted automotive database format that brings maps straight into cars. So what I want to do is I want to talk about something new and that's really exciting because about two years ago, the over 40 NDS member companies started looking at the evolving needs of connected cars, where software plays a major role in the consumer user experience. And what is clear is that in our globalized markets, with its modular and scalable architecture, with embedded and cloud-based systems, with driver systems leading to driver automation, we need to properly support all this in a better way than it was possible with the NDS Classic specification. So modular and self-contained to minimize data consumption, downloading and caching data, enabling both embedded vehicle and cloud systems. And that's why we say NDS Live is the worldwide standard for map data in connected automotive ecosystems. And it is built on the long experience <coughs> of leading automotive OEMs, system vendors, and the data product. NDS Live was officially launched last year in September, and uh, we are actively developing this to be production grade. So since the NDS map data standard was first introduced, uh, technology has evolved tremendously. I've said that already. Map data needs to be much more detailed, precise, and fresher to support assistance, navigation, and automatic driving functions. New use cases for map data are appearing left, right, and center. Cars are now equipped with data connectivity. Map data can be updated and even streamed over the air, and selected features are powered and delivered by cloud systems. So not everything is done by the in-vehicle systems any longer. That means map data needs to work in cloud systems and on in-vehicle systems alike. What's also happening is that automotive platforms span over more and more models. OEMs are looking for greater scale and cost efficiencies. And EV platforms will only accelerate this trend. What that means is that the features needing map data span from fairly basic universal features that need a road network uh, to the more specialized features. So for example, from intelligent speed assistance to ADAS, to basic navigation, to premium navigation, up into drive automation. And with the reducing the number of systems and ECUs down to one, which is an industry trend. We also acknowledge that bringing different data sets with overlaps of data attributes into vehicles it doesn't make sense from a cost and data management perspective. All that data has to travel uh, over data connection, which creates cost. Uh, a modular approach is needed that always allows map data to be consumed by cars according to their active feature set, while the architecture of the underlying system uh, scales across the entire portfolio of features. And there is data that has a very different shelf life. So some of that data doesn't need to be updated often. Map display like data like cargo features or 3D landmarks or digital terrain models are examples here. But then there's data that changes more often and needs frequent updates. And there's data that you need near real time and the system uses only once. So pulling all that into one database and then bringing that one database into a car is, is just very inefficient. 
So understanding data shelf life and offering ways to consume and store data differently has a big impact on data consumption, data transfer costs. And so the mantra is reuse what you can and keep dynamic and live data in as small as possible contents. So that modularity was a key aspect. Um, let me briefly touch on this. At, at here, we manage and publish map data for a high variety of use cases. Some of this data rarely changes, like most of the world network itself. Some of it changes more often, and that requires monthly or weekly or daily updates. And then there is data that changes on a minute by minute basis. So for example, parking, EV charging spots, availability or gas prices, so things like that. On the use case side, you have data you need as a basic canvas for everything else, like the roadmap. And then you have data you need for a group or collection of features like ADAS, map display, routing, search, or drive automation. And you have very individual data needs for a single premium feature, like, for example, the data of a single parking garage that hopefully soon offers indoor guidance or even automated ballet parking. So that the car drives itself off into the structure and you you go shopping. With NDS Live, we can manage and pre-publish these data layers and then group them up and configure them up as a smart layer as per the OEM's needs. And then if at a later stage, the OEM needs a different configuration to enable an additional feature or react to market needs, it's easy for us and for anyone else really using NDS Live to reconfigure or configure an additional smart layer, pulling from the same pool of data. This is a key advantage of NDS Live, and it's not possible with a static, non-modular data spec like uh, NDS Classic. So all this translates to the following advantage. You get a cost advantage because there's no need uh, for large uh, storage hardware in the vehicle and downloading large update regions like the whole of Europe or whole of multiple countries. Your vehicle will only consume what they really need, and you get a great user experience that's hassle-free because the features work like they should with up-to-date map data supporting them. There's no need to trigger an update or to download something to a USB stick. It's future-proof and it caters to the expectation of digitally connected consumers. And NDS Live enables scale by stacking or adding more features later, reconfiguring features of a vehicle on the showroom floor or for the used car market. And there's no need to consume the same data twice because different system features need it. So, we talked a lot about data sizes and storage needs, and I want to share uh, the main differences of a database versus a connected approach quickly. Data needs highly depend on what the map storage and update strategy is. So today you often see whole markets. For example, all of Europe is installed in a car and needs updating. Some OEMs do single countries or smaller states only. Depending on how you do this, using an update region approach always leads to downloading data you don't need. The left image here on my slide shows a vehicle uh, driven around the Frankfurt am Main region where multiple uh, Germany uh, states meet. And from Frankfurt, you can easily cross into three other states and then downloading all of them as a whole, uh, as you can see on the slide, just creates a lot of data. Uh, and that is just one example of one metropolitan region. And there's many of these uh, across the globe. With NDS Live in a smart virtual home zone, the vehicle only downloads the data it really needs, and hence reducing the data consumption significantly. So there is a lot more to talk about. And if you're interested in a deep dive into the possibilities of NDS Live as a, as a data uh, map service, um, then I will recommend the webinar by the NDS Association, What is NDS Live? That's available online. Uh, there is a link here. It takes about an hour to watch, but I believe it's well invested time to get a better understanding of the possibilities of this new automotive uh, standard data service definition. And with that, thank you very much for your time today, and I hope you found this presentation interesting. Thank you very much, Philip. Indeed, very, very interesting. We have a question for you. Uh, so when is or will be NDS Live ready? Yeah, so the as I shared, the NDS Live specification is in development since about two years now. And last year in September, a first proof of concept and demonstration uh, of NDS Live was presented by uh, a joint development uh, team consisting of Electrobit, Joynext, NavInfo, NNG, and here. Meanwhile, Harman and TomTom have joined this team as well. 
so NDS Live map services, clients, and tools are developed to bring NDS Live onto the road. It is basically pre-series development now. Uh, it is currently ready for ISA and ADAS and nearly ready for automated driving use cases and the support for navigation use cases is coming next year. Okay, and is NDS Live only for connected vehicles? Yeah, so uh, while NDS Live was developed with a strong focus on connected and streaming solutions, the data that can be consumed cloud to cloud and cached, uh, and it can also be downloaded for offline use. So you, you get the full flexibility of using the specification for uh, fully connected, partially connected, or offline solutions. We are well aware that we're still a few years away from full and highly connectivity across all countries and all regions, and also uh, the differences of what the connectivity translates to into terms of cost. So if you're implementing against NDS Live, you have uh, the capability to do something highly connected, but you can also do something like a monthly update of data if you want to. Okay, so it, this gives a range of uh, use. Yeah. It doesn't have to be um, just connected vehicles. No. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank no. you very much, Philip. So uh, we have gone through uh, different presentation. We have seen how uh, different maps are built with different layers and how TNITS can help in the creation and maintenance of maps and how it's uh, uh, very important for the trustworthiness of, uh, of the information. Uh, we also had a peek into how NDS can help deliver the most updated maps, uh, the maps that are the most updated to your car. And after uh, this general overview, we will go now um, through a panel about uh, HD maps. Uh, this panel will be moderated by Stefan Siobe. Stefan is an expert in uh, digital mapping and has worked on many aspects of uh, map data sourcing technologies. Um, he strives to make sure that emerging mobility systems and services use high quality and trusted maps. And he's currently a, he is a founding member and currently the TNITS uh, uh, leader for uh, the specification work group. Uh, Stefan will uh, um, provide us with a short overview on uh, HD maps, and then we will go um, through the discussion of the panel with our speakers. I kindly ask you to put your every uh, question you might have in the question box so that we can ask our panelists uh, your question. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan, and you should be able to present now, hopefully. Okay, let me try to, yeah. one moment. This should do the trick, right? It does. Okay, thank you for the kind introduction, Carmela. And before I kick off uh, this session on HD map, um, on the HD maps, um, listening to the previous uh, speakers, I, I kind of realized that we are here with the well three uh, world champion map makers and all three uh, of them are headquartered in the netherlands and i was thinking like why why is this possible how can this be so that might be uh, a point where the, the three of us uh, reflect on so uh, let me start with um, explaining you what uh, hd maps are so HD or high definition maps, they provide a highly accurate and realistic representation of the road. Eh? The HD map typically includes features such as driving lanes, emergency lanes, parking areas, crossings, intersection areas, intersection lanes, lane markings, and, and traffic sign, etc. Also typical for an HD map is its higher spatial accuracy. Now figures are in the order of 15 centimeter for absolute accuracy and several centimeter for relative accuracy. 
And relative, relative accuracy means that if you would measure the width of a lane or the distance from a lane center line to a road guard, it would be like accurate on a few centimeter level. The HD map is closely matched to so-called localization map, and it's often mentioned as an integral part. It's fully aligned with the HD map, and it includes landmarks such as um, traffic signs, uh, lighting poles, lane markings, road guards, and so on. And these are there to determine the uh, position of the vehicle, not mainly. So on this slide, uh, it shows you that, that you can, of course, visualize an HD map. Its, its real function is to support vehicle decision and control systems in advanced driver assistance systems or in automated vehicles. So the, the purpose of the HD map is to extend the vision of the uh, autonomous driving or automated driving vehicle so it better supports strategic, strategic and tactical driving, so making a lane change or coming to a safe stop at the side of the road. The second purpose is the support of vehicle localization that's based on landmarks. I, I mentioned that uh, before. And then in that situation, it is augmenting or replacing a combination of positioning sensors like GNS and INS based uh, positioning. Thirdly, it also supports simulations. On the right hand side, you see uh, an example of that, right hand top. Uh, it allows experimenting with all kinds of AD, ADAS, and traffic scenario. And uh, it also supports asset management. This is a quite a detailed uh, uh, slide. I will not go into uh, a great length of it, but the HD maps are considered to be essential component in the so-called digital infrastructure that enables automated driving. So what you see here on the slide is a classification of road infrastructure in so-called infrastructure support levels or ISAT levels as they were defined in the Inframix uh, project. Where level A, uh, shown at the top, is the top level supporting cooperative driving. And but also the lower levels, the digital map and the HD map is essential. So I, I put this slide up just to show you that in many um, um, levels of support, digital maps are uh, essential and for the higher level, of support going towards cooperative driving, the HD map becomes essential. Now, um, early in this uh, presentation, Tom Jensen has already indicated how these uh, HD maps are produced. So they are created from data collected with so-called mobile mapping vehicles. These vehicles include uh, GPS, INS, wheel rotation sensors, um, high definition cameras and LIDAR sensors, and they capture the road environment. And from that data, the HD maps are created in an automatic or semi-automatic uh, process. Now, these systems are costly to build and certainly to operate, and therefore there, there are not that many around. I have no idea how many, maybe a thousand plus in the world. Uh, but that implies that roads, uh, often motorways or higher road classes, cannot be surveyed very frequently. And the physical road infrastructure is changing on, the, on a daily basis. So traffic signs are being put up or being run over, as you see. Lane markings can fade or are repainted, maybe a bit differently or even significantly differently at the construction site. So the question is how these maps can be maintained and what can the TNITS platform and the TNITS specifications do to support this maintenance? So to answer a few um, questions and to formulate a few ideas on uh, the HD map topic, um, we have with us the panelists and uh, those were presented to you earlier at the beginning of the presentation, so I'm not going to repeat the people. But 
Um, let me um, start the discussion, and I hope that uh, the fellow panelists can uh, show themselves. Okay, so uh, first question. I think this, this is a kind of a generic question for all of, of you to uh, to start off with. So what are your plans for HD maps and how will you uh, rely on TNITS uh, to, to maintain these uh, high definition maps? So uh, maybe Brittany, you can start off. Sure, yeah. So um, kind of our plans for um, HG maps um, in the future, it kind of depends. We work on HG maps more on a specific project by project basis. So it's kind of hard a little bit to project our timeline. Um, but we see the um, implementation of TNITS really helping those. Um, because basically the time that we would spend updating and sourcing um, kind of the basic roadmap information um, we can, yeah, as Ileana showed, we can kind of cut out that time and then we can use that time to um, work on in more innovative um, um, additions to the base layer. So, um, the and also be able, being able to um, implement more automated processes for ingesting the base data that comes from TNITS. Clear. Uh, Christian, have you can you share your view on, um, on what yeah, you plan so, for the HD so in, in addition to what Brittany already mentioned, so we, we see a big potential in TNITS on, on automation because it's a machine readable format, so we can really transform data from machine to machine. And um, yeah, and really in addition to this, also TNITS can be or should be a really a trusted and also authority authoritative source or coming from a public authority so that we can um, use this data for map, map updates already before we detect those changes so because detecting changes is always um, yeah, a longer process as um, already was was mentioned also in the presentation from Iliana and with this we can really shorten up the process on updating maps and also as the base layer map is uh, kind of foundation for the HD map. Um, yeah, having this also as, as HD map and, and yeah, I think this is also what, what we are discussing with TNITS platform is for example, um, new attributes or features like um, clearance or allowance for, for automated driving to have this as a feature in a map and also really on a yeah more or less real time real-time basis, yeah, so. You are muted, Stefan. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so Tom, Tom, can you uh, elaborate a bit on uh, the plans for HD maps and how uh, TNITS can fit in that plan? And you're muted as well. Tom? We cannot hear you. Muted. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, okay. We we could cut out half of the recording <laughs> because of muting. No, we uh, thanks, uh, Stefan. Uh, it's very much in line with what Christian and Brittany also say. Uh, it's about the optimization. How uh, we here get a source which is really delivering the updates only, so we don't need to spend all this time about comparing data sets, searching and detecting the, um, the changes. I think that's the real benefit about the authority in the data, that is trusted data, as Christian also mentioned, is of course also a value for us. There is exactly actually some examples where things are implicit, huh? meaning that uh, there is actually no science in reality telling how the rules and the law is in that case, huh? uh, how it's regulated. Here is also TNITS is giving the opportunity for the authorities to provide such updates to us. I think that's uh, also one thing to, um, to mention. When it comes to HD map, it's a new world. There will be a lot of, nobody knows what kind of vehicles, but there will be some vehicles. This will use this, uh, this information. And I think especially for the authorities also to, yeah, to, to evaluate how, they, how can they use this data format to uh, providing information to the driver. Um, 
Thank you, uh, Tom. Um, I have another uh, question for, for you all, actually, to, to reflect on. Um, so TNITS is a data chain where data from road authorities is made available in a harmonized uh, technical standard uh, and is available on um, via APIs on, on web service. Um, but, you know, everybody has access to that. Much of the data is open data or under an open data license. So how, how can companies stay competitive if they mine the same data? Um, so maybe Brittany, you, you can start to it with that. Sure. Yeah, I think um, as we touched on before, as we can um, use this data to create more automated processes um, and to cut out some of the time that's spent on sourcing and um, creating these updates, um, it gives um, our, our team members more time to think of more innovative uh, products. Um, I know um, our team, for instance, we have quite a few products that um, have the base layer and then we, from that base layer we create um, innovative products um, on top of that thinking about like um, eco alert zones throughout the world or other things like that so we can um, yeah within um, other map makers and just other um, companies in general just keep um, staying competitive um, while still sharing the same base data okay um, Christian any view on that um, no. like HD, uh, the, the TNITS, much of the priority is on speed limits. So suppose that uh, in a foreseeable future, road authorities in, in Europe and maybe outside Europe as well, they all provide changes of speed limits to you. So what, what will you focus on? Because everybody will have access to uh, changes of speed limits. Yeah, so so it's also already Brittany said. So I, I just can can repeat it. It's then more about you know innovation. So because the information is then yeah available for for everyone, but it's it's really about so as a competition will be about the processes. How can we integrate this data and and deliver also this data back to to our customers? So it's it's mm -hmm. really about then we can focus on on products and innovation and yeah. Maybe um, saving also costs on, on sourcing on the sourcing side. Which... Yeah, so there's some optimization there as, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, with the HD maps in general, there is a lot of room for for innovation. Of course, uh, Tom, any any points you want to make there? On the fact on in, in, in innovation, Stefan, uh, Stefan or? On, on the competition um, uh, part that, that TNITS is kind of offering a stream or a interface to data, which is then common for everybody to use. I think it's good because it, it gives a standard in the industry where we uh, know exactly how to read and understand the information. So it also gives this uh, yeah, trust for the for the user, for the driver in the end, knowing that this data is maybe they're not aware, but it, in the industry it will give this stamp to the data saying that this data is authorized. We're getting it from authorities. Of course, then as us as map maker, maker is our responsibility to bring this data to the driver in the end in a, at a reasonable uh, quality and time frame. And that's why I think we can then use our effort. It is quite costful to produce and create maps. Uh, I, I hope that's something that everybody understands. And we also have a limitation, of course, and use a lot of time on prioritizing and how we are investing in, in, in our map. So the more efficient data we can get, we prioritize, for example, speed limits very well. So if you say to me that by in a certain year time of, of, of a certain time frame, that speed limits is something that we will not have to invest as heavily as we do it today, meaning that we can use that effort to innovate and work out other products where we may uh, have been lacking uh, today, or even completely new things in the um, in the HD uh, domain um, for for the uh, for the, yeah, the self-driving uh, vehicles okay thanks um, maybe maybe something to add and then also this this would make really 
yeah, applications more reliable. So all applications like we are speaking about support ISA when we are getting this data. And, and yeah, I think that there's a really a need from, from the map making or sourcing side shows, shows also the TNITS association where we are working in a kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, competition or how, how we should call it. So we are working together on, on the same goals, getting, getting this data from authorities. Okay, uh, turning back to the uh, to the exact topic on on HD maps, um, is there is there a future for autonomous driving, highly automated driving, without HD maps? Um, so I'm let me ask this to to Philip. Uh, yeah. is, is there a future for? I mean, I've shown this ESOT levels, and and of course they they say well. Uh, you need an HD map, but is that is that a given? Yeah. So in order to fully and precisely understand where an automated vehicle is horizontally and and lengthwise, you need to use its sensors and compare what they are seeing to a highly precise reference. And that way, you can control the vehicle with confidence, and that translates to comfort and safety for the passengers. If you don't use an HD map and you rely on sensors only, you will experience what people describe as someone's driving like a five-year-old or a drunken driver, right? Because the, the vehicle is, is trying to sense where it's at and where it's going. You can actually see this in some of the videos of, of some of the first cars with these features that are out there on YouTube. Uh, so yes, I believe you need, a, you need map data and at best map data that includes all of the data that is beyond sensor visibility and attributes that are not sensor observable. And then, yes, I believe you need an HD map for automated driving because that gives you that, that high precision and, and confidence and a reference to compare uh, what the sensors are seeing to uh, how you control that beam. And then if you want to scale that out, I mean, for, for more roads and more regions uh, and, and get rid of the limitations that you see today, then I think we all need to collaborate and, and share data, as you said earlier, like TNITS is, I think, an important data exchange spec to support this from the road authorities and regulators side. But I will also say this, I mean, we're in this business for 30 years, so we know how freaking complex it is. And just one source is, is not enough. I mean, you often need multiple sources, you need multiple drives. We're integrating nearly 100,000 different sources with billions of pro points and sensor data to make sense of all of that and reference it uh, to another, right? So it's hard. It's, it's like one source will not cut it and, and one OEM just using their own sensor data set will not give them the, the needed data also for, for maintaining uh, a certain area uh, to keep everyone safe and comfortable. Thank you, Philip. Is that, is that also your view, uh, Tom? Is, yeah, indeed. Is the, um, it's, it's needed for many, of, many of the um, uh, things. And, and now you also mentioned what the map uh, was about, you know, predicting the path and all that. But it's actually also we have uh, products which is increasing the, the performance of the sensors because it helps uh, localize or uh, increasing the accuracy of the measurements that is done by the sensors. So that's as Philip also say knows where to look, but also by calculating on the map data that we have in, we can actually increase the location of the uh, of the vehicle as it as it drives, as it moves. Um, so yes, um, it's, um, it's, um, it's, it's it's I think it would be difficult for anybody relying on the sensor only without a, a map. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the fusion between those two um, systems is um, is the most optimal. Yeah. Let me ask the same question to Geo Junction, but also um, maybe reflect on the other business opportunities for the HD map. Eh? There might be others. I mentioned that before, uh, simulation in simulation tools. Uh, what are your views on that? 
Yeah, so definitely I would say um, in order to have trustworthy self-driving cars, they need to have HD maps. Um, like Philip mentioned, otherwise it's going to be like drunk, a bunch of drunk drivers on the road. Um, and especially, um, I know once they start testing and implementing it, there might be yeah, just a few, but once we get uh, moved towards the future of just all self-driving cars, they're all going to need to have all the details of where the curbs are, all of the road attributes, um, in order to um, yeah drive around harmoniously. Otherwise, you're going to have cars that have this or cars that have that that are going to be um, yeah in conflict with each other on the road. Um, essentially because self-driving cars we're trying to go towards a future where there's less accidents on the road um so i i feel that especially you need to have that high level amount of detail that um yeah essentially to um basically you're wanting to eliminate human error but also still have all of the receptors that a human eye would have so have all of those details um, and yeah, moving into implementing other products. Um, so um, not to like um, super promote a few things, but like our company is working on creating um, safety alert zones that are around things for um, if there's a school zone, for instance, to be able to talk to the car and say, okay, there's a school zone here and um, you know, the school is in session from this time to this time. So around three o'clock when the kids get out, the car needs to be aware that there's more kids going to be on the roads and this and that, or even uh, dangerous intersections or uh, pedestrian crossways. These are all things that can be um, in the HD map that can be used to create a safer driving um, autonomous cars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I imagine with the HD uh, map, with uh, with the lane geometries and the intersection, the lanes at the intersection, you can come to a much granular uh, types of alert and therefore be um, you know inform more appropriately than just a generic here's a school uh, uh, type of uh, alert that you can uh, exactly can to add a little bit of intelligence into those alerts exactly exactly yeah and okay. maybe here it's important to mention and kind of to build up uh into our, our conversation that we are having right now. Like we are talking about uh, safety uh, and more comfortable uh, urban environment and uh, looking, maybe people now looking there, they're thinking, yeah, but we're thinking only from a company environment and kind of profit, but actually thinking about it, this kind of improvements would also improve safety on the road and kind of improve all all people and mm -hmm. this is basically what road authorities initially want right exactly. so the the societal benefit okay yeah um so we, we have established that the hd map will will be there will come alive and uh, it will be there for automated driving now of course there will be situations where uh, road authorities want to control um which cars or which automated cars and where they drive on on public roads um, is that information um, also something which um, the map makers are interested in and and how should road authorities uh, share this uh, indication so any views on that yeah actually uh, Brittany said something interesting here so when when you know where a school is and what the school hours are what you yeah. what you do today is you you want to share that information and display a warning when someone drives there but for automated vehicles they have what's called the odd the operational design domain so it's basically a flag that says you can drive in automated driving mode here on these road segments you could actually exclude school zones from automated driving altogether because the, the vehicle and the system decides which route to take. And it doesn't matter so much anymore if it takes you three or five minutes longer to do a little detour because you're hopefully comfortably sitting somewhere and, and reading something or I don't know, watching something or doing work or whatever. So, yeah, so, you know, I see the potential to use data feeds in, in TNITS spec to directly influence that ODD. And, and 
when road authorities provide information about road conditions and restrictions and warnings and speed limits, that can directly influence that flag. And passengers and road users can then enjoy more comfort and, and safety when automated driving becomes more common. That not only applies to school zones and inner cities, I mean, it will start on the highways and motorways. Uh, so if there's a crew out there mowing the, the side strip, the lawn, uh, right. you can alert uh, systems to give back control to the drivers so they can carefully uh, drive themselves along that segment. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine you need a harmonized description of such situations huh? because they you need yeah. your vehicles to behave in the same way in Portugal as in Finland. Uh, so TNITS is probably a good platform to discuss this uh, across the, the stakeholders huh? from OEMs to road authorities. Yeah. I mean, what's what's happening today is that the OEMs look at uh, at their at the map and then they decide based on some uh, some rule sets on where they want to enable uh, automated driving. And, and TomTom has a product where uh, your customers can go in there and, and do that and modify data, and we have one, right? But it's currently still a fairly manual approach, I would say. So having authorities feed into that system. So that flag can be switched on and off by the authorities providing information. So that's more of a dynamic flag than a static flag. Then, uh, you know, at greater scale, I mean, that would be nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, Tom, Tom, you you showed at the beginning of your presentation these nice different layers from static um, or standard definition definition to high definition now um th these maps relate to to in to each other what is the, the glue between those those maps yeah the the, the, the glue so also say uh, i think maybe in the more in a, in a data term is that you link data you have an id identifier that you can uh, use uh, between those um, different uh, layers that those different uh, maps there is um, is when it's delivered by one uh, map uh, provider that thinks a system not knowing <laughs> the products of the other so well, but as a common system that you have uh, your internal IDs that you can use to link this. But that's not the only option. Um, actually, what we also is using in the TNITS is we can use other uh, information. Uh, there is some uh, some 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 uh, some some tool development done. There is something called OpenMilar, for example, which is based on location referencing. Can make sure that you talk exactly about the same road without having to describe all the coordinates and and, and details of the road. And that is used to link um, also the the, the life map I mentioned. You can also use it on your on your HD map, and you can even do that. To an independently map, meaning that you could uh, emerge. So that's also what uh, is how the TNITS uh, works. You don't necessarily need to have a TomTom -tom and a here and a, and a geo junction map to be able to provide information to it, because there is this mechanism of the um, of, uh, of of the, for example, the uh, the OpenMLR. There is also other systems where you can then geo reference the data, so we are sure we are talking about. The exact same road or same part of road or same crossing or same location, and uh, there is a system. Yeah. Hi. In yeah, program. some technical difficulties. <laughs> yes, oh. somehow oh. Uh, it, we were cut off. I apologize to uh, the attendees and to Tom. <laughs> you were uh, speaking and we finished abruptly. I really apologize about that. Unfortunately, technical issues, it happens. So uh, let me check if also Stefan is here. I'm here. Hello. Yes. Uh, we're back. Yes, we are. Yeah, I think past the court three, everybody was kicked out. Um, so, 
I, I have a I have a final question. <laughs> so it's <laughs> we were at the end of the session anyway. So, but um, like not all road authorities uh, in Europe have these uh, operational TNITS services. Uh, we we have the project uh, TNITS Go, and a number of uh, road authorities in Europe will have pilot services or, or even operational services with rather limited scope. Uh, mainly the 10 t network, sometimes uh, in some occasions, like in the Netherlands or in Flanders, all roads are covered. But um, the question is, how, how can the industry, like the map makers, how can they stimulate the road authorities to make more data available in, in this harmonized DNITS way? It's a tough nut to crack, I admit, but <laughs> maybe you have some ideas. <laughs> Tough, Thank tough you. question. Oh, not, not really sure if the industry can really incentivize or, or motivate. I see it also from the point of regulation, but maybe someone, someone else has another thought on this. So, because I think the delegated regulation already sets sets a good framework on on providing this data. Via, via national access points. And I think this, this regulation now really needs to be uh, realized by, by member states. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for, from industry point of view, not sure how we can really, really motivate, but um, yeah, maybe some, well, someone has a, has a better you are, yeah. you are leading the TNITS platform. So you yeah. are already, you are committed to. Yeah, I to think our job is our job is always to to show that this is um, really an, a process which is already working. So we are using already TNITS data, and then it's it's feeding our maps, and and this, this is really our job. And then also showing like in this webinar how it is, ends up in in applications. Mm -hmm. But I think so, there's also, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. So if they provide it in, in an agreed upon uh, format, you will use it. That's, and yeah, that's, yeah, that's, of course, of course. That's, that's the shortest route, I would say, to government data being used at, yeah, at the end user, either the, the driver or the, or the vehicle, right? Yeah, I think also, I mean, that we can, as a, as a map provider, we take, we, we take our job very serious to provide the freshest, the bestest, the highest quality data to, um, to, yeah, to the end user, to our customers. Um, and I think also that should be a strong motivation for the authorities um, to, to, yeah, to, 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 to see that we actually take this uh, so seriously to provide the, the information. Um, and when it comes, and that's both because we, you know, we take it seriously because it relates to safety, it relates to emission, um, things which are, if I was an authority, I think that's that's topics which should be uh, have a high support, um, and thereby also from our hands that we at least make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's there. Um, I do know that many, uh, I can see the amount of data that we already are getting and using from the authorities, they have investing a lot of money in, in building up that digital infrastructure. It is a bit scattered today, but hopefully over time. Also, I mean, things like this standard that we have with TNITS can help that standardization of government data that it be, be used. If it's used by TomTom Tom and others, I think in the end for the society, the interest must be that to have correct, uh, correct data. Imagine driving on the road and each time uh, you drive into another EU uh, country, then suddenly there are no speed limit signs, so they are missing. And so, I mean, that must be an interest also from each of the national authorities to make sure that that, that information are available for the drivers in the, in the vehicles. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, because also um, there was a, a European Commission document released I think in 2019, and they were saying exactly this. Uh, more, more than 70% of the accidents are happening uh, with vehicles that are from another country in the European Union. Exactly what Tom is talking about. 
Yeah, because we are so used to uh, to that physical environment with traffic signs and so, but there is a lot of information which is relevant for the drivers, which is not visible. I think there have been, there have been some, uh, you know, um, what they call surveys also, where you have stopped people on the road and ask if they know how much they can allow to drive on this uh, on this piece of road. And it's a very high percentage. I don't recall exactly, but we are above 50 percent. They're not even knowing what speed they're allowed to drive. Huh? That is that kind of information that we are bringing into the vehicles. And if, with the help of authorities, can improve the quality and the, and the accuracy of that information, I mean that's that must be a high lift for the um, for the for the society when it comes to safety. So we we do see a, a lot of more, more openness. Uh, at the site of authorities and not not only road authorities uh, if you look at the um, amount of open government data that's being um, made available that that is that is enormous and it it not only um, is the sheer fact that more data is available it 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 reflects the fact that governments become more open and more transparent and and uh, that's either because they they want to, and also because there is a soft push by by organisations like the Commission to to do that, and, and initiatives, huh? not, not only the push, but uh, there are like uh, funded uh, programmes to, um, to to build um, uh, data open data portals and things like that. So over the last decade, we have seen more and more uh, govern governments opening up. Uh, all types of data from statistical data too and that's fortunate for us uh, road road data okay um i think we are more or less through the questions i don't know carmela if we have um, received additional questions from the uh, audience no it wouldn't appear so no i think uh we have um, gone through all the questions that uh, that we had and the question came from uh, um, the audience and i wish to uh, thank all our speakers uh, uh, philip eliana Brittany, tom christian and stefan thank you very much it was very interesting to see how maps are created how they work and how tnits can contribute to better maps more reliable, more reliable, and how it can be beneficial for HD maps and uh, safety and automation as well. So um, I would like to thank you again to you and all the attendees, but all, all, all the participants in this webinar. And uh, I, I say goodbye to the next uh, webinar. And for sure, we will in TNITS with the platform, with the projects, uh, and with our um, map makers who are present here, and also our road authorities. We will continue our um, reaching out to road authorities and reaching out to the public to um, promote TNITS and to support the implementation of TNITS services for the benefit of everybody, the society, the citizens and the industry. Thank you very much all and see you all very soon. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.